welcome to Highbrow Lowbrow. I'm your host, Sean. With me here is Ron Sensei. Each week we get together to discuss a well-regarded, highly acclaimed film against a popular blockbuster. Basically an artsy fartsy film versus my list good time. And like the week prior, we have another special guest for you tonight. Please welcome Christine Gerolaga. Hey! Hi. How's it going, Christine? I'm I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> Um, so, so tell us uh, how you uh, know of the show, know of us. Why, why did we bring you on? I don't know. Why did you bring me on? Uh, no. Um, so I'm an actor and filmmaker. I'm from the Bay Area, which is where I met Sean and Ron. We all met on set, and um, we have been longtime collaborators since. They have been super helpful with my own projects and uh you know i try to come out to help on their stuff too um and we're friends so that's why i'm here so thanks for having me yes on. definitely definitely really good friends we really appreciate you having having you on the show um so what's the uh category of movie we're going to be watching this week all nighters all right oh, cool. all right let's all right. do the, the ceremonial cheers, ceremonial cheers. Cheersies. <laughs> All right, what's up next, Christine? Well, I chose a eyebrow film called After Hours, directed by Martin Scorsese. All right, let's get into it. Directed by Martin Scorsese, After Hours is about word processor Paul Hackett, who meets and talks literature with Marcy. Later that night, Paul takes a cab to Marcy's downtown apartment. His $20 bill flying out the window during the ride portends the unexpected night he has. He could not pay for the ride and finds himself in a series of awkward, surreal, and life-threatening situations with a colorful cast of characters. He spends the rest of the night trying to return uptown. So, Christine, uh, what do you think of this highbrow pick? And maybe give some background on why you chose it. So, okay, I saw this film for the first time a year or two ago um, at the Egyptian here in LA. So I saw it with an audience. I mean, everyone was just like having a good time. It's such a funny movie. And it, the way it escalates is wild. I, like, it's just an unpredictable ride. And that's why it came up in my mind as something that would be super fun to discuss. I thought it, it was also my first time watching it. Um... I've, I've been a fan of Martin Scorsese. I've, I've seen most of his movies. You know, if you if you compare it to his um, modern works and how the pace goes, this was kind of like in the beginning part where it's not yet super mastered. Like the, the pacing is not, you know, bam, 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 bam. And then, you know, it, it, now, now if you look at Scorsese now, it's super confident. It can go this way and then it can break the fourth wall and it can go back to the past and now it can go back to the present, forward to the future and then come back to the story again and you didn't miss a beat. You understood everything. Uh, after Hours kind of border lines on the surreal and the comedy aspects of uh, Scorsese. So it's very interesting to see how it was. It's kind of like watching cas uh, Casino or uh, Goodfellas and then seeing Mean Streets for me because I saw Mean Streets later. So it's like, th this for me is like, I, I saw uh, the, the surreal, um, what, what do you call that? Um, <clears throat> Shutter Island. Mm -hmm. And then, because it's the same thing. You don't know what's happening. Is this a dream? Is this something like this? Um, and then uh, Wolf of Wall Street, where it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a comedy or king of comedy as well. Um, this is kind of like uh, the prototype version of that um, but but it's very interesting how 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 he developed you know um, but yeah it, it, it's a, you know as somebody who's a big fan of Scorsese it's a it's a pleasure to watch uh, I really enjoyed it so I did I did do some research I did look into it a little bit and there is a lot of uh, uh, heavy ideas of um, demasculation and castration and sort of sex um, the idea of it being um, being put forth and the guy sort of constantly pulling back from it from these women that are constantly emasculating him um for example uh the 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 artist the artist lady she um she ha has such uh a, a dominant dominant femme sort of sexuality and it it entices but it also scares him at the same time which i thought was super interesting um the way he can't commit to like sex even with the person that he supposedly likes 
um, it's it's pretty interesting in that regard. Uh, and um, I, I really do like the the way with which Scorsese plays. And, and here's where I'll argue for this film's highbrowness. Um, I think this film's highbrowness and, and highbrowness can come from the idea of being um, artistically uh, free and and unafraid to do things that don't make sense, to be um, weird, to, to try to appeal to a more um, abstract point of view with, with how yeah. his story is being interpreted. And I think that's what makes this, gives this film its highbrowness. Now, I wouldn't say it's, you know, a super highbrow film, but I think the experimentation that is given, that is done in this film does um, speak a lot to highbrowness and, and does speak a lot to films that are trying to be films for, their, for art's sake. But uh, what, what do you think of the, the what what Sean mentioned about? Uh, so in your research, um, the, they said specifically that the filmmaking team was was covering the themes of like emasculation of men. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, is it, is that the critics' point of view or? Uh, that, I'm curious about that. Yeah. So um, that's something I came across in terms of like you know, doing random research, doing random articles, like looking mm -hmm. at it. Uh, I don't know the exact source of it, but um, the example, and you can argue, argue against that idea, idea if you want. Um, but the examples that I've, I've seen seemed pretty similar because every time he's supposed to, because he's, he's going out there f to get some, he's going out there to like have sex. Um, mm -hmm. and, and at every point he goes to have sex, it's, he finds himself like flailing about, you know, like emasculated, like, he like there like uh for example with the older woman right he seems like he has all the control in the relationship right and he's he's like about to get it on with this older woman like do you know what this is no like if, in fact several times there's like easy prey that he goes after but but he always ends up just being failing to, to, you know, seal the deal more or less. Um, and I think it speaks to this larger sense of like him being emasculated or him like not really fulfilling the deed. And, and then maybe, I don't know, there's could be some weird sense of frustration with that or frustration with himself because he, because he tries to go for it, but then he's like, no, I'm just going to go uptown. It, like that's, that's always like the back and forth. He tries to go for it. And no, this is like too weird for him. I'm going to go uptown you know this is too much this is too much sex for me what do you what do you think of it christine each scene with a different woman played out in that same in that similar way of like it starts out where like you know they they vibe with each other there's chemistry and then it starts to get to a place where he's discovering more and more and more about this you know person and you know it's like to me by the end of the scene like I feel like he is deciding for also himself not to go down that path, um, you know, with that person. So I, I mean, like, I'm not saying I disagree or agree with sure. that thought, but I mean, if, like, if if that's what Scorsese and uh, Joseph Minion, I think is the name of the writer, um, were intending to explore with the film, like, I, yeah, sure. Like, if yeah. that's what they were doing, cool. I mean, I saw it as a film about a man who or you know a person anyone can relate to that guy like you know average dude uh working his nine to five just trying to live suddenly deciding to get out of his comfort zone and just like yeah. be a yes man you know like say let's say yes to this opportunity and see where it goes and it just goes right yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that that's what i thought because it it seems like he is kind of like um so it it's a it's a commentary of city life where mm -hmm. he is like the corporate guy he worked as you know this he has a corporate job he has a corporate apartment you know he it's it's a sealed kind of apartment unit they close it down and he chose to go downtown and what happens when you go downtown anybody who lives in the big city knows that when you go downtown you it's it's like a zoo the, the shit's happening to him and it's also him questioning himself um you know Scor scorsese is very uh very catholic and um you know it's kind of like the whole job thing like 
suddenly all shit breaks loose. He gets eaten by a whale. He's like, dude, what? Why? Yeah. Why me? I love the way the movie, like, like when it really gets started, like the, the first thing you see is a $20 bill fly out the taxi. And it's like, that's like, that feels very realistic. Obviously, like that could happen to anyone. And then the next thing is like, the pen doesn't work when he's trying to take down her number. Like, I just love these little things they're doing to foreshadow and set up just <laughs> how bad the rest of the night is going to go. And then it just all hell breaks loose it is a nightmare from that point to the end for him and and it's as if he wakes up back in the office like you know what i mean like and, and the movie and, normal life. right the movie started with like oh man this normal life sucks you know you should you should be more and blah 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 only to at the end of the movie he finds comfort in that boring normal life <laughs> right yeah. that that's what happened eventually in the beginning he's like oh yeah you know you should be more and blah 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 and mm -hmm. then he's like okay well my life is boring let me take a chance and as soon as he takes a chance yeah. he's like yeah that's not for me i don't know if it's comfort by the end i do think it's just like defeat yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean he's sitting at his desk a zombie almost like expressionless like exhausted tired done covered in a uh, plaster of Paris or whatever that is. And I feel like with multiple watchings of this movie that there could be um, more meaning derived from it. And you can see certain, um, certain themes run throughout it. I don't know if the emasculation theme really plays all the way through throughout it, but I do think there is some um, interesting things to be said in this film about um, trying to extend yourself past your comfort zone and realizing you can't um, or don't want to or don't feel right for it. So I thought that was a really interesting sort of central theme about it, um, going, flying too close to the sun, so to speak. So, but I did, I did really have a fun time going on that journey with Paul. So that's what we thought about. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Sorry. You, you... Go, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, I definitely want to look into that emasculation uh, uh, theory. I would love to read up on that and hear more about um, that exploration in the film, for sure. That sounds super interesting. And that's what we thought about After Hours. Next one is my pick, which I kind of struggled with because I'm like, what am I going to pick as a lowbrow, a lowbrow for this in contrast to After Hours? My pick for all-nighters is Airplane. Airplane is a spoof comedy that takes shots at the slew of disaster movies that were released in the 70s, when the passengers and a crew of a jet are incapacitated due to food poisoning, a rogue pilot with a drinking problem must cooperate with his ex-girlfriend turned stewardess to bring the plane to a safe landing. All right, Christine, what'd you think of Airplane? Oh my God, I love this movie, obviously. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I mean, it is jam packed with right? jokes. Every scene. I mean, jam packed. Visually, in the dialogue, the way they're acting, like you can miss a joke if you are not watching. So it is a film that where you could rewatch it and catch a joke you may not have caught. And the level of jokes, it's, it's supposed to be a uh, parental guidance. <laughs> yeah. I was like, a PG? <laughs> this is a PG film? Yeah. I mean, yeah, right, yeah, back in that, what is this, the 80s, like 80? Yeah, 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 80s, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, <laughs> such a funny film. I mean, it's totally my, uh, sense of humor in terms of like I just love absurd jokes yeah. I love stupid puns I love um, taking things way too literally you know what I mean and turning yeah. it into a visual joke I love that shit so obviously this is a really fun time for me <laughs> it's fucking wild I mean super fun you know not every joke is gonna land but it's so jam-packed <laughs> that there's a joke for everybody in this it's so yeah. fun and funny and you know, I love I love that they're, you know, making fun of disaster movies and the seriousness of them and like just having a good time. Having watched Airplane like multiple times over, um, at this point it's like a game almost to see what I haven't, what I yeah, what I have missed, you know, because I've watched it like a, 
I would say three to five times, I would say. Um, so I've watched it a bunch of times, and I, and I don't think I've watched it all the way through, because honestly, with this movie, you can jump in at any time and sort of start watching it. Um, the plot is, is like more or less a little nonsensical, because it, it's just like a paper-thin plot. Not really nonsensical, but just super e- simple. Super... They ate fish. Yeah, yeah. It, but so it's, it's on a plane. It's it's a very, it's it doesn't like you can just jump in wherever and you can just be like okay yeah sure this is like the premise right. Um, yeah, he's just got to save this plane from crashing. Yeah, got to save this plane from crashing. So um, because the pilots yeah got food poisoning. So you can jump in wherever you want and then um, be up to date with what's happening and um, you know see certain jokes come to play throughout. Um, the level with which they replay certain jokes is really really good um the <laughs> idea of um um what's that building or whatever where they constantly are stating oh the building is a you know this building is this place with this people in it yada 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 um it, you know but that's not what we're talking about right now uh the level with which they repeat jokes and and have this um constant uh constant re- uh, reference to previous jokes or the level of repetition is really cool and really fun um you know, uh, let me all get get to that later. But in general, I thought this was a really fun movie. Um, one of the best examples of absurdist um, uh, cram as much as you can comedic films you can find. Well, I picked this movie because I am like Christine. I saw bits and parts of it very young, and it always kind of it, it's it stuck with me. So I wanted to see it in its entirety as an adult. And uh, yeah, I was just like, wow, this, this is, uh, you know, <clears throat> for a dumb movie, it treated its audience as smart people. It never, it was, it's not as condescending as today where they feel like you have to dumb down or kind of like be careful about your jokes. It treated its audience as though they would understand that this is, this is humor and it's funny that way. It explored its, it, you know, its balls to the wall not afraid this is uh, the real comedy where it can be goofy but it, it explored everything you know from the from the captain who's saying like oh i picked i picked the wrong week to stop smoking it's like i picked the wrong week to quit smoking it's like i picked the wrong week to quit drinking it's like i picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines it's like i picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue <laughs> Things like that, um, and the cast. The cast here is insanely uh, talented. Like, and Christine is right. Like, every bit of this movie is jam packed with just killer jokes. It doesn't matter if it misses; it's gonna get you. And the airplane to me is a classic. And um, yeah, you, you you can come in. At any point of the movie, you might think, oh man, a flashback. I don't want to see a flashback, but no, it's fucking funny. The Girl Scout, the Girl Scouts yeah. fighting. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah. This is a certain type of comedy, right? Like it's right. different from, like, how, how do I put this? Like, I, I want to compare and contrast it to the comedy of today and say, like, in terms of, like, uh, being too afraid to say certain jokes or something. You know, I, I really do think Airplane is great at not alienating their audience members. There are certain comedians today who, like, their comedy does not appeal to everyone because of racism, sexism, you know, all those things that, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they are a turnoff, like, to people, to me in yeah. general, too. Um, I think airplane is like everybody's invited. Let's go. We're making fun of everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're making fun of ourselves. It's just fucking hilarious all the way through, and they're not like they're you know, not they're afraid. Not doing, like overtly like fucked up kinds of jokes that you know to, are just like kind of outdated. You know, in in the two thousands, you have the um, the the Judd or was it that dude? Um, you know, the frat pack. And then you have um, the Freaks and Geeks crew. Um, you have, throughout time, you have certain comedy groups of people, right? Um, and I think that that time, that like those sort of like late 70s, early 80s films have that same sort of cast of characters. Lloyd Bridges, um, you know, is certainly a central part of them. Um, 
uh, Leslie Nielsen, you know, another big, like the Naked Gun police, police squad group of people, the Zucker people. Um, there's a lot of those people in this film, the, the, that Zucker ca cast of characters, where it's just zaniness, zany, zany people being zany. Um, right. This is, I mean, this film is what set that path off for them. Right. Exactly. Like that's right. I, I, I was reading like that that year um, Caddyshack came out and um, the Blues Brothers came out. And those were like really highly anticipated comedy films that both did not do well critically. And Airplane was like the surprise hit that no one even knew was coming. Like, and the comedy, you know, I mean, like the comedy in Airplane is like, it's just, it's so fun. The, the world they set up, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. you know, with the freaking announcements of the, uh, the white curb versus the red yeah. curb. Yeah, yeah. Like the moment, like it starts, like yeah. they start switching off. Like I was reading in the trivia, like they got the real people who at the time were the announcers, I think at LAX, right? <laughs> and they were actually a married, they're a married couple in real life. And so they got them to do those voices, like just such like super fun ideas. Like, I, I love that that's where it all starts. Like, you, like we're going to the airport, everything's normal. We all know this. And then like the absurdity just like hits the ground running. It's so fun. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's what we thought about Airplane. Uh, next up, Verdict. So Christine, which movie did you end up liking more? Oh man, it's like, do I have to pick? Obviously I enjoyed both films for what they both have to offer. It's just a great time. The comedy is incredible. Um, you know, if we're talking about a better film, like not in terms of like better comedy, even though like that to me is still like, oh, the comedy's so great in both. Like if we're talking about a better film, if we're talking about a film that um, stays with me, you know, maybe a day or two later, I'm still thinking about it. I'm still affected by it. I'm still laughing about certain things. I'm going to say After Hours. That's my choice on this. But hey, I love both of these films so much and had a great time watching both. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is pretty tough um, in terms of like, because both films are doing really interesting things. Um, Airplane um, definitely feels like a much more classic film um, because I think you can, uh, you, you can always sort of touch upon Airplane as a keystone in comedic history and film. Um, in terms of like being like an all-nighter film, um, I mean, I think uh, Air, or, uh, All After Hours fits that role because it goes throughout the entire night cycle, like goes from beginning of the night to the end of the night. Um, although Airplane does encompass the night, it's like all fit in within one night. And I feel like it does take the span of a night to accomplish. Um, so, but I do really appreciate this early, um, this early surreal pick from uh, Scorsese. I feel like there is a lot to delve into it. Um, but I think I can't really deny the comedic classic power of airplane so i'm gonna go with airplane on this one very hesitantly um because I, I do want i do want to give um uh props or, or acknowledgement or even just like i'm gonna rewatch this again and again uh for after hours because i feel like there's so much more to delve into it but um but if I'm gonna re recommend a movie to somebody and say, "Oh, you gotta watch this," I think it would. I think Airplane would edge it out a little bit more for me. So I've, you know, I'm a big Martin Scorsese fan. Almost all of his movies, I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, he he's like a heavyweight in terms of uh, where I put directors in. But you know, After Hours, it, you know. To me, it, it just completes his library. I see the, the development of the director, how he does the comedy and the, surre the surrealism. But I feel like a After Hours is kind of like his uh, proto-master version of it. Because later on, you see his comedy and he doesn't pull any punches. He just pulls the trigger right off the bat. But it's very interesting to see how he started it. So I, I give that. But, it, you know, to me, I pick airplane all the way because even today it doesn't matter 
it doesn't matter where you come in. I mean, to me, that's the that's a hallmark of a great classic movie. It doesn't matter where you're from. You take some guy from the future, 40 years from now, he's going to view airplane. It doesn't matter what, what part of the movie he comes in. You know, you just walk in at this scene, at this point in time, you can, you're can you going to have a laugh or whatever, and you're going to enjoy it, and then you can just leave. Or you can actually stay put and watch the whole thing. So uh, it, for our lowbrow film uh, and a classic film, I pick Airplane. So that's what we thought about those two films. Be sure to tune in next time when we try to find out who was right. Sean or Ron or the other special guest. See you guys. <laughs> Bye.